April 29th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Samuel, chapters 3 through 5 of the Old Testament. Now the boy Samuel continued serving the Lord under Eli's supervision. Word from the Lord was rare in those days. Revelatory visions were infrequent. Eli's eyes had begun to fail so that he was unable to see well. At that time, he was lying down in his place, and the lamp of God had not yet been extinguished. Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord as well. The ark of God was also there. The Lord called to Samuel, and he replied, Here I am. Then he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back and lie down. So he went back and lay down. The Lord again called Samuel. So Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I didn't call you, my son. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. Then the Lord called Samuel a third time. So he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Eli then realized that it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So Eli said to Samuel, Go back and lie down. When he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went back and lay down in his place. Then the Lord came and stood nearby, calling as he had previously done, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel replied, Speak, for your servant is listening. The Lord said to Samuel, Look, I am about to do something in Israel. When anyone hears about it, both of his ears will tingle. On that day I will carry out against Eli everything that I spoke about his house, from start to finish. You should tell him that I am about to judge his house forever because of the sin that he knew about, for his sons were cursing God and he did not rebuke them. Therefore I swore an oath to the house of Eli. The sin of the house of Eli can never be forgiven by sacrifice or by grain offering. So Samuel lay down until morning. Then he opened the doors of the Lord's house, but Samuel was afraid to tell Eli about the vision. However, Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. He replied, Here I am. Eli said, What message did he speak to you? Don't conceal it from me. God will judge you severely if you conceal from me anything that he said to you. So Samuel told him everything. He did not hold back anything from him. Eli said, The Lord will do what he pleases. Samuel continued to grow, and the Lord was with him. None of his prophecies fell to the ground unfulfilled. All Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, realized that Samuel was confirmed as a prophet of the Lord. Then the Lord again appeared in Shiloh, for it was in Shiloh that the Lord had revealed himself to Samuel through the word of the Lord. Samuel revealed the word of the Lord to all Israel. Then the Israelites went out to fight the Philistines. They camped at Ebenezer, and the Philistines camped at Aphek. The Philistines arranged their forces to fight Israel. As the battle spread out, Israel was defeated by the Philistines, who killed about 4,000 men in the battle line in the field. When the army came back to the camp, the elders of Israel said, Why did the Lord let us be defeated today by the Philistines? Let's take with us the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord from Shiloh, when it is with us, it will save us from the hand of our enemies. So the army sent to Shiloh, and they took from there the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, of host who sits between the cherubim. Now the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. When the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord arrived at the camp, all Israel shouted so loudly that the ground shook. When the Philistines heard the sound of the shout, they said, What is this loud shout in the camp of the Hebrews? Then they realized that the Ark of the Lord had arrived at the camp. The Philistines were scared because they thought that gods had come to the camp. They said, Too bad for us, we've never seen anything like this. Too bad for us, who can deliver us from the hand of these mighty gods? These are the gods who struck the Egyptians with all sorts of plagues in the desert. Be strong and act like men, you Philistines, or else you will wind up serving the Hebrews the way they served you. Act like men and fight. So the Philistines fought. Israel was defeated. They all ran home. The slaughter was very great. 
30,000 foot soldiers fell in battle. The Ark of God was taken, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were killed. On that day, a Benjamin knight ran from the battle lines and came to Shiloh. His clothes were torn and dirt was on his head. When he arrived in Shiloh, Eli was sitting in his chair watching by the side of the road, for he was very worried about the Ark of God. As the man entered the city to give his report, the whole city cried out. When Eli heard the outcry, he said, What is this commotion? The man quickly came and told Eli. Now Eli was 98 years old and his eyes looked straight ahead. He was unable to see. The man said to Eli, I am the one who came from the battle lines. Just today I fled from the battle lines. Eli asked, How did things go, my son? The messenger replied, Israel has fled from the Philistines. The army has suffered a great defeat. Your two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead. The Ark of God has been captured. When he mentioned the Ark of God, Eli fell backward from his chair beside the gate. He broke his neck and died, for he was old and heavy. He had judged Israel for forty years. His daughter-in-law, the wife of Phinehas, was pregnant and close to giving birth. When she heard that the Ark of God was captured and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she doubled over and gave birth. But her labor pains were too much for her. As she was dying, the women who were there with her said, Don't be afraid, you have given birth to a son. But she did not reply or pay any attention. She named the boy Ichabod, saying the glory has departed from Israel, referring to the capture of the Ark of God and the deaths of her father-in-law and her husband. She said the glory has departed from Israel because the Ark of God has been captured. Now the Philistines had captured the Ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. The Philistines took the Ark of God and brought it into the Temple of Dagon, where they positioned it beside Dagon. When the residents of Ashdod got up early the next day, Dagon was lying on the ground before the Ark of the Lord. So they took Dagon and put him back in his place. But when they got up early the following day, Dagon was again lying on the ground before the Ark of the Lord. The head of Dagon and his two hands were sheared off and were lying at the threshold. Only Dagon's body was left intact. For this reason, to this very day, neither Dagon's priest nor anyone else who enters Dagon's temple step on Dagon's threshold in Ashdod. The Lord attacked the residents of Ashdod severely, bringing devastation on them. He struck the people of both Ashdod and the surrounding area with sores. When the people of Ashdod saw what was happening, they said, The ark of the God of Israel should not remain with us, for he has attacked both us and our god Dagon. So they assembled all the leaders of the Philistines and asked, What should we do with the ark of the God of Israel? They replied, The ark of the God of Israel should be moved to Gath. So they moved the ark of the God of Israel. But after it had been moved, the Lord attacked that city as well, causing a great deal of panic. He struck all the people of that city with sores. So they sent the ark of God to Ekron. But when the ark of God arrived at Ekron, the residents of Ekron cried out, saying, They have brought the ark of the God of Israel here to kill our people. So they assembled all the leaders of the Philistines and said, Get the ark of the God of Israel out of here. Let it go back to its own place so that it won't kill us and our people. The terror of death was throughout the entire city. God was attacking them very severely there. The people who did not die were struck with sores. The city's cry for help went all the way up to heaven. God, every time I read this story about the Israelites losing <laughs> the Ark of the Covenant, um, I always think, gosh, how could how could they put God in a box? Don't they know that God is bigger than than a box? Even though the box was holy to them, uh, incredibly holy, holier more than we as as American Christians understand. Um, how could they confuse that with the power of you? Um, and and then be so baffled when they didn't win. Um, and then I think about about my life. 
and how I try and put you in a box. And, and granted, my boxes that I have you in in my life aren't made of gold and they don't have cute little cherubs <laughs> hanging out on the top of them. The boxes I try and put you in are boxes of control um, where I, it's the I've got this God. I don't need you boxes. Um, I'm in control. I've got this figured out. That's a, that's a big box I put you in. Um, another box uh, that I put you in is I got myself into this. I'll get myself out. I think that's my stubbornness box. Um, and maybe a little bit of the control box as well. Um, I also put you in a box that really scares me that I put you in this box. It's truly that I don't remember how, how big you really are. And I start to see you through the filter of humankind. So, so if somebody has hurt me, if somebody has lied to me, if somebody has betrayed me, I attach human filters to you. Um, and you have never, ever done any of those things to me, nor ever will you. Um, and you love me beyond anything that I can even comprehend. Yet my human response to you just like my human responses to fellow humans is through those filters, through those pain filters, those learning filters uh, that other people's actions have taught us. Um, and that's a that's definitely a box I put you in many times, forgetting just what sovereign really means. Uh, the God of the universe that we say so flippantly, but but truly you, truly you are. So so God, of course, today I pray for you to help me open those boxes cut them up into little pieces and throw them into the recycling bin because <laughs> you never have, never will be a God of boxes. There's nothing that can contain you, nor should anything ever contain you. What I think is absolutely miraculous to, to my understanding is as soon as I remove that self-imposed box, it's just always crazy awesome the things that you do in my life. As soon as I take off those hindrances, not for you, but for me to see things, um, you just show me the most amazing, glorious, beautiful, forgiving, um, filled with mercy and grace things uh, in my life. So God, today help us remove those boxes that we put you in. Uh, we don't see them in this story because it's it's so different, something very, very holy and gold and wing cherubim and but we so put you in uh, boxes at least in our minds and how we live our life god you didn't you didn't go to all this work to create us and you didn't uh, have to put your son through the crucifixion for us but you did all of this so we could have freedom so we could be free not so we could put ourselves back into slavery god Thank you. Thank you for that incredible freedom that you have given us out of your love for us, which is amazing. In your son's name we pray. Amen.